Hi everyone, welcome to Dream Factory. This is a quick video to get you up and running with Dream Factory and get you started. So quick overview of Dream Factory before we hop into the, some of the details. Dream Factory is an open source Apache license, uh, REST API platform for mobile web and IoT development. It makes it really, really easy to, to build your applications without writing a ton of server side code. And the way it does that is it automatically generates REST API endpoints for a ton of different data sources, SQL, NoSQL, file storage, remote web services, and a bunch more. It provides uh, sophisticated scripting capabilities, so you can customize your behavior of your applications with Node.js, JavaScript, V8, and PHP, and we'll talk about that briefly in the demo today. And then lastly, provides really sophisticated security controls uh, that you don't have to hand build. And this is really helpful. So role-based access control on all of your API endpoints, Active Directory, LDAP, OAuth integration, uh, JSON web tokens, which makes scaling your applications really, really easy. And so all of this stuff is built into the platform and you can just start using it. So to get uh, started, the first thing is really when you, when you sign up as an administrator, you'll end up on this welcome page. Uh, you can always come back here uh, and click on these links to dig into the details. But the first thing I think you want to do is look at these sample applications. And for example, you've got ones for Objective-C, Swift, et cetera, all the way across. You just pick your platform. And you can always come back to the quick start here and get to them this way. And this explains a little bit about what you're going to do once you click on the links. Um, so what I'll do is just click on Android, for example. And that's going to bring you to a GitHub repo that will show you in the README a tutorial about how to get started uh, with Dream Factory, whether you're running on your local machine. Um, you can also run it on the hosted system or install it on you know, a cloud if you like. And this just shows you how to start running this uh, application, and it shows you how all of the API calls work for your typical use cases of authenticating end users and database calls and that kind of thing. So. A little more than Hello World, uh, enough to kind of really introduce you to the, the key concepts uh, with a practical um, scenario, practical example. Um, so I mentioned the quick start. You can always come back here. Resources, uh, also repeated on the welcome page. And then download links. So we have an enterprise product, which is a separate distro. You can learn about that on our website. You can install that from here. You can also install Dream Factory on all of these different uh, clouds locally, Linux, and straight from GitHub. So that's uh, just a useful thing if you want to deploy it uh, in a different place than you have it deployed today. So next one I'm going to cover, I'm going to talk about apps, and then I'm going to cover services, scripts, API docs, and then end with roles. This will be very high level. Uh, we have videos for all of these tabs in our wiki, which I'll point you to, which go into a little bit more detail. So important things about apps. Um, apps are provide an API key. So you need to have an API key to call the services, i.e. the APIs that you're uh, using in Dream Factory. That's all an app really is. To create an app, you click to create, give it a name and description, uh, select your option here. The app can be hosted like a web app. It could be a native application where no storage is required as well. So pick your option there and you can also pick a default role. What that means is uh, <clears throat> if your, your application doesn't need authentication in some cases or there's a use case where you don't need users to authenticate, you can give that app a default role and that role will allow or disallow those unauthenticated users from doing things inside of the application. You can also import. This is a great way. If you follow the directions in the README, you can select any of these for my address book, for example, and import it, and it'll show up in the list here. So that's apps in a nutshell. Services is the core thing. So before you build your application, you need to figure out, okay, what type of API is this application going to use? And that's where you start adding services. So when you get Dream Factory, you'll see a bunch of services already here. There's a local SQL database, a SQLite database. There's also a MySQL database. Also MongoDB is built in if you've gotten Dream Factory from Bitnami. These APIs are ready to use. So again, Dream Factory as a LAMP stack comes with a database already there uh, and you can just start using it. You can also connect to your own API, uh, rather your own database, and Dream Factory provides an API for that as well. So to create a new service, you go and click Create and then pick what you want. It could be LDAP, a database, NoSQL or SQL, file storage, email services, push notifications, uh, OAuth providers. You can hook up to remote web services. So if you have an existing API, Rust API that you want to connect to with Dream Factory, not a problem. You just select that and follow the directions there. 
Custom scripting is building your own API if you need to do that. And then you can also hook into SOAP. So that's all there is. The classic thing that most people do is SQL to start with. So to do that, you just select SQL and then just pick your driver, Postgres, MySQL, et cetera, and off you go, save that. Dream Factory will then securely store those credentials and pass through to that database uh, the API calls. Again, the API calls are automatically generated. So let's cover that next. Once you've added your services, you're going to see a uh, Swagger 2.0 API interface. This is the live API docs. If you're not familiar with this, um, it's pretty straightforward. You just select the service. So every service that you add here will show up. For example, if I want to look at my DB, I've got API calls for schema for all of the data endpoints. There's about um, roughly 40 endpoints here. And these are abstract endpoints. And before you start building your application, you can just start looking at these. And this is really useful. So it shows you all of the API calls that you can make. You can put in any number of parameters that are built up and generated and, and make these API calls. So you can add related records. You can pick which fields you want. You can do rollback or commit. You can um, uh, provide uh, the table name, obviously, the IDs that you want, filter strings to do sophisticated and or queries, uh, limits, orders, groups, et cetera. Uh, quick example, just to see how this works. If I wanna fetch the contact record and let's say um, I wanna just uh, get all related records by foreign key, I could put star there and I wanna do a quick filter like first name like John. Let's say something like that. And I could try that out. And what that's going to do is run the API. It's going to give you the request URL. So API v2 db, API names db, underscore table. The object is contact. And then any number of filter parameters uh, will show up or any type of parameter that you added here. I added two, related equals star and filter. I put a simple filter in there. And you can string as many of these parameters as you want to the end of your API. So this will return people starting with John, and then it's going to show the relationships, the foreign key relationships, all as one big JSON packet returned. This is also useful because you see the curl call, so you can go straight to your terminal and pass this in. And if you look at this, you'll see the API key is in here and the session tokens uh, put in in the header. It's a JSON web token. And then the URI for what I just asked for is shown here in curl. So that's API docs, very basic. Next thing is scripts. So scripts will show up if you add scripts, they'll show up in yellow here. So I'll show you a quick example. On our DB API, we have a contact object. And if we scroll down here um, or click on this, you'll see that on this endpoint, DB contact post, so the verb post, before we commit records to the database, we're gonna do a simple field validation in JavaScript. So you write your script here, pick your language V8JS, uh, which is native and sandboxed in Dream Factory, Node.js or PHP, and click active and save it. So that's on the request. And then on the response, coming back, so let's say that I committed a record to the database and now I want to um, push, uh, do a push notification. After I commit, I can push to SNS, for example. So uh, platform.api.post, and I have an API called SNS and a topic endpoint, and that will just post a push notification. Uh, once that record is committed. So that's a quick example of that. Now the last thing that I want to cover quickly is roles. So here you can set up as many roles as you want and roles represent um, access control over your API, best demonstrated with an example. So let's say I have a sales team role and I imported my address book application and now my end users are going to authenticate into that application but I only want those users to have access to the four tables upon which that address book depends and nothing else. So I'm going to explicitly grant access to these four, um, these four tables in the DB service. Again, we, we talked about how we added that and we looked at the API, API docs for DB. And here are our different tables and you can grant your uh, verb access here. And you can say that you want script and or API access. API access is direct access via API to those tables. Script access is just saying that the table is accessed by a script and I want to allow that table to be accessed only by the script but not directly accessed. That's what that kind of means. You can also do role-based access control. So you can say, for example, there's an owner ID field on the contact and I only want users to be able to, to create, read, update, and delete uh, his or her own records. That's what this uh, logic will do. 
and you can add as many of these as you want, and you can do uh, intersection or unions on which records can be accessed by this particular role. So that's roles in a nutshell. The other tabs, you've got admins, which are people that are uh, obviously using this interface. You're an admin. If you're watching this video and using it, you can add other admins. Users are your end users. You have schema and data. So this gives you views of the database schema and the data records that are in the various databases that uh, the API is using. Files, just as self-explanatory. So if you hook up S3, you have files that will show up in this UI. And then config and packages. Config has a whole bunch of settings that you can configure, such as cores. Packages let you import and export your data, or rather export your uh, packages, meaning your apps, your services, your schema. And then you can go into apps and import that. So moving applications and, and schema and services between different instances of Dream Factory. So that's in a, in a nutshell. I do want to point out, again, important resources. Always come back to welcome if you need help. Uh, our documentation has a bunch of things, so wiki.dreamfactory.com, you can look at this, a bunch of tutorials, videos, features in detail, etc. Um, our website is dreamfactory.com. We have uh, subscriptions. You can use our community form for free, but if you like Dream Factory and you want to use it in development, uh, production, uh, go there and check out the options and get in touch and we'll uh, provide support for you. And then lastly, we have an enterprise product, which I mentioned at the beginning. This is a product uh, that you can download for managing many instances of Dream Factory, particularly in production, after you've built some applications and you need to manage those applications in production. So go check that out as well. So that's a quick overview of Dream Factory. Hopefully this has been helpful. And learn more at www.dreamfactory.com. And thanks for checking it out.